Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. John White, the Chief Medical Officer at WebMD, and you're watching Coronavirus in Context. What is happening with the Delta variant? Are we all going to need boosters in the fall? Do we have to start wearing masks whether or not we're vaccinated? So to help give us the answers, I've asked one of the best experts I know. Dr. Eric Topol is the Editor-in-Chief at Medscape and is joining us from San Diego, California. Dr. Topol, welcome. Great to be with you, John. You know, I got to start off with the Delta variant. You can't turn on the news without hearing about it. You and I have talked about variants before. How do we differentiate scariants in terms of what we need to worry about? I want to start off, though, by asking about vaccinated people. How concerned for those that are vaccinated be when it comes to the Delta variant? Well, we'll see a report uh, in the New England Journal today that indicates uh, vaccinated with uh, mRNA vaccine uh, is high, very high protection. Uh, this is from Public Health England, uh, a large sample also comparing with alpha variant. So the uh, suppression or protection from infection is about 80% or better and from uh, severe illness, hospitalization or death, 95, 96%. So, the protection is excellent, uh, but because of the fact that we have 160 million Americans who've been fully vaccinated, yeah. we've got some people there who are going to get infected. Most of them will have mild illness uh, or even without symptoms if they get tested. So this is something that I think uh, because of the math and the denominators portions of people are getting a skewed sample or sense of what's going on here. The vaccines we have are potent against Delta. They're not as good as prior versions of the virus for just preventing infections, but they're just as good for preventing severe illness. All of them? You had some preliminary information preprint about the J&J &J vaccine, a different type of vaccine that we've talked about, not the mRNA like Pfizer and Moderna. Still right. very good protection there's two, or, or not well, as there's good? No, there, yeah, John, there's no clinical effectiveness reports for J&J. &J. Okay. Uh, there are two lab studies, you know, whereby they take serum and okay. expose it in the lab to the variant um, uh, the, from, from people who've been vaccinated. And in those two studies, both of them showed with the J&J &J vaccine that the level of neutralizing antibodies uh, was lower, but still above the threshold for protection. Uh, and in, in a preprint yesterday from NYU, it showed that it was less than the mRNA vaccines, mm -hmm. but not contradicting the other one. So okay. there's definitely uh, some protection. The question is, is it good enough? Um, and, you know, I think this is something that's uncertain right now. We have a lot of anecdotes of people with J&J &J vaccines getting mm -hmm. a breakthrough. Uh, but, you know, we don't have the data to yeah. cinch it yet. My suspicion is it's probably uh, an issue, but I don't know for sure. But Eric, how do we really know how many breakthrough infections there has been? CDC has stopped counting unless it's hospitalizations or deaths. So how do we make those accurate assessments? Yeah, well, we have a real problem with lack, lack of adequate tracking here. Uh, and we know that the more you'll test, you know, like it's being done at the Olympics right now or you know, uh, by sports teams and certain places around the world, like the UK is testing fourfold more than us. You know, our testing has gone down as our outbreak has gone up, which is the wrong move. So there are more breakthroughs that are asymptomatic that are only getting picked up by testing. But more importantly, there are people who are symptomatic, not getting tested. Uh, we want to sequence the virus when there's enough uh, sample because it's not just a matter of defining Delta. We also want to stay ahead of this. There could be future variants of concern. So we are we're not doing this uh, uh, appropriately. And, you know, over a billion dollars was allocated to CDC to do this. And that was months ago and nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. Let's get to what listeners really want to know. Eric, they want to know if I've been fully vaccinated, do I need to wear a mask, at least indoors? We saw that's happening not far from you uh, in California, in Los Angeles. The recommendation to, to wear masks irrespective of vaccination inside. So it gets confusing. 
So what should listeners be doing? Let's assume they're fully vaccinated. Do they need to wear a mask at all? Do they need to change their behavior right now? Right. Well, I mean, I think this is pretty clear as you're alluding to the LA County, uh, a very impressive surge of cases. Uh, and of course, all this was happening when the masks uh, were abandoned in California. So, you know, I think the data is speaking to us that using a mask indoors, if you're vaccinated, is prudent. And especially if it's more than a very brief encounter. Mm -hmm. And the more people, the more vital the mask is needed and the less ventilation. I call it the Delta stress test for vaccines, right? Yeah. That is, if you are vaccinated, you're in good shape. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is a very contagious mm -hmm. strain. This is a thousandfold more viral load, you know, vi viral copies are hanging out in our nasal upper airway than in the Wuhan original strain. That's a lot more viral yeah. load. So the, the vaccines are great, but, you know, they are not uh, perfect. And if we don't pass the stress test, mm -hmm. That is, don't wear the mask. That's not a good yeah. thing. And a mask is simple and it helps, as does distancing and ventilation. And when you can avoid uh, indoors, if you're only with known vaccinated people, the risk are, is reduced. Right. But it isn't certain because, you know, we still know it's possible that an, a vaccinated person could be in the pre symptomatic phase and still potentially be transmitting. It's low, very low chance, but it's still possible. Because we thought a little while ago that vaccinated persons may not be spreading. Now, we really don't know the answer for sure, do we? Well, I think if they're symptomatic, they can. Yeah. Uh, the, question, the question is that even in the couple of days before they develop symptoms, okay. it looks like, you know, those who've had a, 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 a substantial viral load, I don't see any reason why they couldn't transmit. It's just, this is rare. Yeah. Uh, and you just don't know. So I think the, 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 the smart thing is just for the moment, we're gonna get through this Delta wave. Mm. It's a matter of weeks, but for the moment, you know, just assume kind of the worst case scenario, wear a mask indoors, uh, I, I, you know, you're not gonna regret it. How concerned are you about what's happening in India? What's the preliminary data from Israel about the potential need for boosters? Again, we have some conflicting information. Pfizer says, you know, they're getting boosters ready for the fall. CDC and FDA says, hold on. There's no data that says we're going to need boosters. You and I have talked about it a couple months ago before we had Delta variant. Now we're going to hear about, you mentioned on your Twitter handle, Lambda variant, where, you know, we still need to have more data on. And I do recommend to everyone that they follow you on Twitter. How concerned are you about what's happening in other areas of the world that are going to impact what happens here? Right. Well, you know, I think Delta is expressed, uh, you know, in different countries very differently. So if you look at Indonesia and Russia and Bangladesh and, uh, you know, South Africa, so many places, it, it's, it's been ravaging these countries. They have very low vaccination rates, less than 20 percent or even less than 15 percent. And so they're, they're feeling the full brunt. Now, if you look at the UK and Portugal, uh, Israel, these are high vaccination places. They have markedly blunted the impact of Delta. But what, as you've alluded to, John, in some elderly people, many months past when they got initially uh, vaccinated, they have some breakthrough infections. And it raises the question as to whether people of uh, vulnerable, especially vulnerable people might need a booster as we go forward. It, it seems likely in the elderly or, you know, people who are immunocompromised even now, of course, uh, because they're not getting a third dose. And we know certain people mm -hmm. like organ transplant individuals yes. will, will benefit from a third dose. But w will we need a booster for all people? That's still very uncertain. And we haven't any new data uh, to, to, you know, no evidence to make a judgment. I'm sure we will see that in the in the months ahead. But right now, as you know, John, the uh, the White House crew uh, administration reviewed the data Pfizer had and said it wasn't compelling. And of course, that data hasn't been shared with us. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see more of it. Eventually, we'll make a, uh, be able to make a call. But you know, I'm thinking it's not an all uh, thing. It's not everyone, but 
you know, we'll see over the, um, yeah. as evidence uh, accrues whether that is the right uh, sense of where we're headed. Is there a danger of too many boosters perhaps selecting out certain variants and then perhaps exposing yourself to something later on in terms of immune protection? Yeah, I mean, I think the problem here we're, with the booster we've just been talking about is just the same darn vaccine. Mm. And so all it does is just kind of rev up the immune response to the spike protein, but it doesn't have the uh, multivalent vaccine specifically against Delta. And moreover, we know we could make vaccines that would knock out the entire cervical virus family, all the pan coronavirus, and we're not pushing on that enough because that could potentially be ready in the months ahead too and get us uh, equipped to deal with any variants. Mm. So I'm disappointed that we're still going to re- uh, reusing the original vaccine rather than shifting to one that would basically squash it all. So it would be even more potent. Um, I know that's in the works uh, and Delta is the most challenging version of the virus we've seen for sure. Um, but I think we have to think bigger and think about, you know, whatever Epsilon or, you know, mm -hmm. Omega, mm -hmm. We got to think about Omega. those. And just get, <laughs> oh, yeah, we just got to get a we got to get a vaccine ready for yeah. all things, yeah. all variants, and we can. I know we can do this. Mm -hmm. What does September look like? Mm, I'm actually right now thinking September will be over this Delta hump. Okay. Uh, if you watch India, they had almost no vaccines, mm -hmm. and in about two months they went from you know to a hellish, horrific situation to back to baseline. So basically what happens is it runs through the people it's going to run through, right? And most of them are unvaccinated, mm -hmm. some are vaccinated, but you know the vast majority unvaccinated. It doesn't, um, of course, hurt people with prior COVID as much. And I think people tend to forget that if you've had COVID, you'd be better off to get one dose vaccine, but at least you have some natural immunity. Mm -hmm. But it runs its course um, it finds as many hosts as it can, you know, and it goes through um, a population like it will in the United States, and it, it's done for, for that time. I mean, it's still around, but it's, yeah. it's not going to be yet. So then the question is, will another variant, will another wave come through? We don't know yet. You know, Lambda doesn't look like it's going to be the one. There's nothing out there yet that looks like a Delta, uh, you know, uh, plus a true uh, worse than Delta. But, you know, the fact that it isn't contained in the world, it could be cultivating right. that next version. So I'm optimistic okay. about September, but I don't know beyond that what's going to happen. Right. Well, I'll check in with you in September as well, if not sooner. I always appreciate you taking the time. As I said at the beginning, I always turn to you when uh, we have to find out what do we really need to know. So, so thank you, Dr. Topol. Thanks, John. Always great to have a chance to talk with you.